Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Griffin GFX. Today, you're gonna be learning how to turn your photography and your digital artwork into this kind of scrapbook collage paper effect inside Photoshop. Now to do this, all you need is a few textures, which I'm gonna be sharing 100% free in this video. I've got paper rips, paper textures, and even this halftone texture, which basically makes your digital work look like it's printed out, kind of comic book style. If you guys are appreciating the 100% free content then make sure to let me know with a comment a like and subscribe if you haven't already up on screen right now you'll see the type of artwork that I've been doing recently on my Instagram and I had so many comments asking for the tutorial I couldn't find anything too too similar to this on YouTube already so I thought you know what let's give it a go so yeah guys go get yourselves a drink go get comfortable and let's get straight into Photoshop let's go Hi guys, so I'm going to be getting experimental with you here today. I don't currently have an image in my head that I want to create. I just know the basic things that I want to cover so that you guys can go ahead and absolutely master this effect by yourselves. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use Pinterest to find some imagery. Now, what do I want to create today? It's always best to go in with a kind of rough idea. I think I might do another Juice WRLD edit because I've just been listening to some of his music. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find a cool image of Juice WRLD. Now, something to think about is not to use the images that everybody else uses. Most celebrities have around 10, 20 pictures that gets put all over the internet. Go and find something a little bit edgy, a little bit unusual that the average Juice WRLD fan won't have actually seen. So I just found this image. I might do something with this. I'm going to keep searching around and see what else I can find. I just found this one as well, which I think is very cool. So I'm actually going to swap it out and I'm going to use this. Now, you're most likely going to want to cut out the background. So to do this, I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm just going to start going around like this. Now, because this is white on orange, I could probably use the magic wand or the magnetic lasso tool. So do that if you're in a rush, but I like to use the pen tool just because I get to make the edges exactly how I like them. So I'm now going to press delete and I'm going to move on with my artwork. So I think the background needs to be somewhat light because of how light the, because of how light his hair is around the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look for some background imagery. As you guys probably saw at the beginning of the video, I have a Pinterest with lots of graphics inside and I'm going to be sharing that so you guys can get lots of paper and just basically templates and effects that I've built up over the years. I really like this image. I like how his hair looks with the cloud behind it. So I'm going to find the best position for that. Just on some random shit here. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of throwing some visuals together to see if I get inspired. I'm going to mess with the lighting a little bit here using the curves tool. No, so I'd be liking how this looks. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to pull out my texture pack and I'm going to go ahead and use the paper tool. And I'm gonna pick a rip so you basically just drag these in and then you have these really nice paper rips like this once you've got one of these you're gonna pull it over to the bit that you'd like it on and just place it slightly above so I'm gonna place mine like there and then once you've got that you can go ahead rasterize it you can cut out the edges where you don't need it and then you can be prepared to go underneath and then erase the image that you want to not be shown like that for example i quite like these little paper effect that's come down off the bottom so i'm going to leave it currently but i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to drag another one of them over the top up here so we can do the same thing but on the top of the image and i'll show you exactly what i mean so once you've put it down you go ahead and you click the image underneath and then you remove everything above the rip obviously so that it looks like you printed it out on paper and then ripped it up rasterize now you're probably going to want rips going down the side. Something that I like to do when they're down the side is I like to drag the image in a little bit like that. So I'm holding shift and I'm just pinching it in so that it's really flat because I think the rips on the edges look better when you can't see too much of them. If that makes sense. So here is this so far. Now what I would like to do is I would like to add some lettering up top. 
in with all the textures i actually have some alphabet like magazine cutout style imagery so that you guys can go ahead and drag any letters in if you want to start to get a little bit more typographic here is an example of that i've just dragged and dropped it in so we can go ahead and we can select the j copy and paste now we have the J, it's literally that simple. You can take these from all different places, pick the favorite letter from each sheet until you have your word completed. I like the J here, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my sources to find the rest of the letters to spell out Juice World. An effect that I sometimes use with these letters is I actually add a paper rip onto one of the bottom of the letters. So how you could do that is just by dragging it over, making the paper rip be on top of the letters just to make it a little bit easier for yourself. And then let's say we wanted to do it with the eye. We we'll position it like that. And then you just rub out all the other parts of the eye. So off the edge and off the edge there. And you just leave it at the bottom. Now it's a little bit hard to see with the eye because it's white on white. But maybe if you had it like going over the black like that. Something like that can look really cool and it can help to make the letters look like they're sitting on top of the layer that's underneath. I really like how these look when you make them black and white so something else you can do is if you go into the black and white layer it looks a bit boring if you just turn the saturation off but if you then use the curves tool to really lower the darks and to lift up the lights you get this really kind of photographic old-fashioned newspapery effect I think this is a really cool effect but for this image I think what makes it so powerful is actually the colours so I'm going to leave the colours on for now and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a half tone texture to our image so how you would do that is basically by turning all of the layers into one layer excluding the paper rips you want to keep the paper rips on top because the half tone layer doesn't look very good when it's attached to the paper so once you've got those layers all onto one layer like mine is now you can go ahead and simply drag the half tone texture on top now there's three different sizes of halftone. We have the large one, which when opened is basically very visible. You can see the halftone clearly. And then you have the small and the medium and the small one is good for like if the image is very huge or you want the halftone to be less noticeable. I'm gonna use a medium for this one. So once you've placed it on top, you can go ahead and create a clipping mask, which will clip to the layer that you've got underneath. Now it's a case of going through all the blend modes until you find one that best fits with the image. So for example here, this one has just taken out the white and left the black. So the black is sitting on top, then you lower the opacity to get it to the desired strength. So if you have it about here, then it's very noticeable on the whites, but almost unnoticeable on the dark. But we're not gonna be using this blend mode. I'm gonna keep going through until I find a nicer one. I'm going to use overlay because I think it looks very nice with the saturated colors and then I'm going to lower the opacity just so that it's a low key amount like around here so that it looks like this is made on real paper instead of on a screen. So there you go guys that's basically it I don't really know what more to cover there's obviously loads that you can do within this style and the more you play around with it and the more messy you get with different textures you're gonna find that the overall outcome starts to get better and better but this is basically the basics I like to keep my videos short and sweet if this video is useful then please drop a like and let me know what you liked or disliked about it and that is it from me guys I hope you have a great rest of your day night whatever it is and I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos take care guys peace out